Hello there and welcome to my workshop. Now then, what am I going to do with this neck? Can I rescue it? Or should I just use this old neck that I found the other day? I don't know. I'll tell you what, I've got a fantastic My Guitar Story coming up. So please stay tuned. Whew. Not sure how we're going to do this. Just kidding, I don't think I'll use that one. No, I'm not giving up with this neck. But I'm not gonna dive into it straight away today. I've got some work to do on the body. I'm going to use this piece of sycamore that I actually cut and shaped for the Kingfisher guitar and it was sort of left over as a spare. But I'm gonna use it to connect the neck block up with this piece at the tail of the guitar. And, um, it's already shaped to the uh, the radius surface there so um, I need it thinner I've marked it up so uh, over to the bandsaw fortunately I've been using the bandsaw to cut some chipboard that covered chipboard the Conti board whatever they call it and it's uh, yeah not done a lot for the blade unfortunately get it the right way around Now I'm going to cut it to length and I've actually marked it on this base here so I can see exactly where it should fit so that just slides into there so I need to put a mark just there I'm basically just embedding it in these blocks just by five mil Now I need to cut a little recess which is uh, 10 mil high and 13 mil wide. I think my pencil lids run out. I think my pen's falling apart. <laughs> okay, try again. Okay. Going to do scribe this by hand. My saw cuts are a bit wide, but I can put a bit of veneer just in the edge there and that will be uh, a really nice tight fit. So um, I'll try and do the neck block end a little bit better. Okay, well now the fundamental problem there was that my chisel was too wide, just a little bit. Anyway, put a couple of veneers on each side and I'm just going to glue it in. That was the 
get it the right way up. It's a really nice tight fit. Okay, I'll just make sure it sits okay on the surface here and it's, that looks fine. Now I'll just uh, glue on the neck block. Okay, so that bit's done, so just let that cure. Okay, so um, I bent this piece again in the last episode. Um, it's now looking much better than it was. It's, it's still sort of sticking out at the back a little bit, and so is this one. But I think that uh, once I've got it all glued up and I've got those all glued into place, that's all going to hold into the shape that I want. So I'm not too worried about that. So I think what I'm going to do now is just glue these little fillets in into position and uh, let them set. And then, uh, well, then I might tackle the neck. Now I've reshaped this little piece last time. So... Um, it should fit basically that piece goes just inside that front edge there and that then should glue in nice and tight so I can see I need to make a slight adjustment to this curve I think that did the trick. I've put a pencil mark where this needs to uh, to be glued. So I'm going to use uh, the same trick as I did last time. So a little bit of super glue and some wood glue. Let's do it. too much there. <laughs> fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Okay, here goes Dave. Into position and press. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, and he nearly stuck his fingers together, but uh, sorted. Okay. And that one will just butt up to there. Well, on a positive note, we're starting to see the shape of the body come together. That's got to be good. Now, I think I've got to tackle this neck. <sighs> okay, I can't put this off any longer. I've got to do something with this. Now, um, it glued on, and if you remember, what I did was mix some dust and glue in with the glue. Um, so, combination of glue, dust and glue, and all sorts. Uh, to try and fill in some of the, the gaps that there were there and then you can see it's oozed out so uh, hopefully there's some in there. Um, I've got to try and shape this now and make it look as though it blends into this neck. So how do I go about that? I think I'll start off with the sander. Uh, and take a little bit of the material off but I've got to be really careful this time because I just don't want to go too close to the uh, the headstock uh, and, and, and mess that up so uh, yeah I'm going to do it a bit at a time so uh... oh and by the way I'm very grateful for one of you kind folks for advising me not to wear gloves while I'm using the sander I mean I, I don't wear gloves on the uh, any of the saws now or any of those sort of machine tools but uh hadn't quite appreciated it with the sander you need to have your hands free so you can first of all feel the work and also you'll know if you're getting near the paper
Okay, well, I've made a start on this uh, neck and, um, well, it, it's looking reasonably good. I need to do a little bit more shaping on it though. I'm not entirely happy with it. So um, I'm going to carry on with that. But now I think it's time for this week's My Guitar Feature. For this week's feature, I'm very grateful to Morris who sent me details of his guitar. Now, Morris has built an acoustic guitar and it's the first acoustic guitar we featured in this series. So this is a bit exciting. I have to say, this is no ordinary acoustic guitar. Morris tells me it was inspired by the Smooth Talker guitar that's designed and built by Mervyn Davis, a luthier from South Africa. Now, I had to go looking for this guitar, but I found a photo of it. And as you can see, it's a little bit different. Now, Morris has called his guitar the Overlution guitar. So I think you can see where this is going. Anyway, I think you need to be quite a creative person to tackle a project like this. And so it was no surprise to me to uh, discover that Morris uh, is quite a talented woodworker and artist. He tells me that he was uh, born and raised in Northern Ireland, but in 1977, he moved to Canada. And uh, he's now been retired for about seven plus years, but he likes to spend his time in his workshop. And I completely understand that. <laughs> uh, in fact, he builds things. Uh, he's built some lovely furniture and, well, various things around the house. And he also paints. And he actually created a website. And I'm going to put a link to the website below because it's an absolute gem. I mean, the work that you've produced, Morris, is absolutely fantastic. And I love your paintings. Anyway, I'm going to concentrate on your guitar today. Let's dive in and have a look at the spec. Now, I'm going to flash the spec up as I normally do. Um, but if you want to grab the details, just pause the video and take a screenshot because I'm going to show you the guitar almost straight away because I think you need to see the guitar to understand the spec. Morris says the main body parts are made from Sapili, African mahogany. The top is made from uh, Sitka spruce, which is book matched. So, okay, here's the guitar. Wow, that is a beautiful guitar. Look at that. Look at that shape. I mean, that's so unusual. I mean, I can see where his inspirations come from, but um, he's he's put his own design uh, style on that. that. That's absolutely fantastic. He says, the neck is laminated with tapered EP, which is Brazilian walnut, as a central strip flanked by maple and mahogany strips to the outsides. All of these are separated by Wenge veneers. The front of the headstock has a Sapili with a veneer with a Wenge flash in the middle. Wow, yep, <laughs> that's really beautiful. And look at that lamination on the back there. Oh, and that's a beautiful volute <laughs> as well. I wish I could carve volutes like that. The fretboard is Paduk, and both the fretboard and the headstock have a maple binding, and I think it's a flamed maple binding. And look at that. That looks brilliant, doesn't it? That really does look nice. The fretboard dots are maple, and the side dots are wenge. The bridge is made from Paduk, and it has two tusk saddles. These are the synthetic bone material. The bridge design is quite unusual, having two saddles, one each side of an adjustable compression bar. And the bridge and the front saddle is positioned and shaped for the correct intonation. This design puts minimum stress on the soundboard, allowing for maximum freedom of movement. The tailstop is Wenge. I like the design, I must say, uh, Morris. And, and obviously with my hollow body guitar, I'm just trying to think how I'm gonna do a tail stop. <laughs> and that's certainly a very good idea, the way you've done that, it's beautiful. 
Morris says, I only had photos off the internet to work with, so I had to come up with how it all could fit and hold together with the stress of the strings. Now, I just want to have a quick look at the woods that uh, Morris has used, because some of these are new to me. Um, I've already covered Sapili in a previous feature. And as always, if you want to go back and have a look at these uh, previous features, if you go to my website, uh, footstepsguitars.co.uk, there's a link there and there is a link to all the specs of the guitars I've covered and to the video clips. So you can go back and, and have a look at those. Right, the first wood is Sitka Spruce. Now this is a sustainable wood. It's a light coloured wood with a uh, ranging from cream white to, to a yellow. And it's fairly easy to work as long as there's no knots, apparently. Um, it does say that you can get blotchy and inconsistent results with stain uh, because it's got very closed pores. But, uh, uh, yeah, be interesting. The next one is the uh, Ipe uh, Brazilian Walnut. Now, this is not listed as endangered. However, the Ipe species grow in very low densities. I'm not sure the quite the implications of this, but um, reading the Woods database, it looks as though you, you've got to take down a lot of trees to find the Ipe tree. Anyway, um, it colours from reddish brown to a more yellowish olive brown or a darker blackish brown. It's a lovely wood by the looks of things. The workability, it, it's difficult to work as it's very hard and dense and it can blunt tools. Now, I use walnut i think it's american walnut and um, i've had trouble planing it because i find that it does tear out a little bit so you've got to be a bit careful with it wenge now this is a wood i've not used um but I, i've seen it used by many other guitar builders um it's not listed in cites but it is listed on the red list and that's because there's been a 50 percent reduction in the population over the last three years. So it's one of those woods that they're keeping their eye on. The colour is a medium brown, um, sometimes with a reddish yellowish hue, and it has uh, nearly black streaks in it. It's a lovely wood. <laughs> it can be difficult to work as it's very hard and dense, and it can blunt tools, and it can tear out when planing, I can imagine. <laughs> Now, the toxicity, it says breathing wenge dust has been reported to cause central nervous system effects, abdominal cramps, irritation to the skin and eyes. It's also a sensitizer. And I also read that if you get a splinter, it can cause infection <laughs> more than another wood would. So you've got to be careful with that one. Anyway, the last one is the uh, African Paduk. Now, I've assumed it's African Paduk. Uh, there are others, but anyway, it is sustainable. Um, it's a pale pinkish orange to a deep uh, brownish red in colour, and it's easy to work. You have to be careful for tear out, I understand, but um, otherwise it's, uh, it looks pretty good. Let's get back to the guitar. Morris didn't take any photos during the build process, but he is able to take the back off the guitar. So he sent me a few photos for us to have a look at. Morris says, the upper bout serves three purposes as I see it. To structurally support and hold the neck to the body, to give it a more balanced and recognisable overall shape, and to provide a place to attach a strap if you need one. The oval sound chamber is approximately 365mm wide, 280mm uh, high and 80mm deep. And the sound exits through the opening at the end where the neck attaches. I think that's a really clever place to put a sound hole. <laughs> he says, in spite of its small size, it has great natural sound volume, projection and sustain. The body is bolted together using cap screws and this allows me to take it apart and reassemble it easily. Very nice, yeah, very clever design that. The neck is a multi-laminated through neck design, a portion of which passes through the sound chamber to the tail end. And I fitted a mechanism there to allow the action of the strings to be adjusted by tilting the neck uh, uh, without removing the strings. I'm particularly intrigued by the lattice work that's fitted under the soundboard to give it more sort of support. Morris says that's made from the same Sitka spruce that the, uh, the top is made from. 
Morris tells me that he lives in an apartment complex and he has access to a fully equipped workshop with machine tools and hand tools. So that really helped building this guitar. But I mean, I have to say, Morris, there's a lot of skill gone into this guitar and I'm not sure that even with all the machine tools, I could produce something as quite as beautiful as you have uh, created there. Morris says, I would encourage anyone thinking about making a guitar to get going and you'll be surprised how much you learn along the way and be proud of the final result. Thumbs up to that. Even if it's not a great musical instrument, it will make for an interesting wall decoration and discussion topic, so go for it. <laughs> I like that idea. If it doesn't play in tune, stick it on the wall. That's a good idea, Morris, yes. Perhaps a few of my guitars should go on the wall. Anyway, <laughs> Morris, thank you very much indeed for sending us photos and details of your guitar. It's been an absolute marvel to, uh, to go through them all. Um, very inspiring. I've certainly learnt a lot from the way you've constructed your guitar. And um, yeah, well, a lot to think about. Anyway, thank you very much. Cheers. trying to create a 3D petal shape on each of these so I'm, I'm I'm filing away those lines to give me a sort of a ridge and then I will smooth it off with sandpaper just using this diamond file fine sanded me and the camera down to about 240 grit uh, you can see what we've got now um, tried to get these ridges here between each of the sort of petals um, I can see I might need to do a little bit more sanding just to smooth that off a little bit but uh, otherwise it's not looking too bad but I do need to do something along this top edge and I'm just wondering what I get away with putting some dark binding just on the top edge. I don't really need it on the bottom, if I'm honest. But, uh, well, let's see if I've got something I can use. Now, I've got this old fretboard that I took off the bass guitar. And um, if I flip it over, I can see that it looks like uh, some sort of rosewood. Um, it may be the Santos Rosewood, I'm, I'm just not sure. It was a fretboard that I bought that was pre-done. Um, so I think I might be able to use this as binding. I, I just need to be able, uh, need to cut it down and uh, cut away all of those fret uh, slots there. So uh, I think I'll have a go at that on the bandsaw.
tell you something, one of the reasons I wasn't keen on that bass guitar was the colour of the fretboard. I mean, it's this sort of funny brown, look, sort of mid-brown colour, sort of yellowy brown. But, my goodness me, look at the wood! What on earth did I do to it? To turn it into that funny browny colour. It's beautiful. Oh well. Okay, this is my mini bending iron, which is basically an old um, soldering iron with some piping around it. Um, what I'm going to try and do is attempt to bend a piece that will go along the top there. So, let's give it a go. Before I do anything, I'll get the gloves on. Well, as you can probably see, that, that didn't work so well. It's split. So I think the wood was a little bit too thick. Um, I'm going to have another go, and I've got an idea. OK, this time, what I've done, I've thinned the wood. So it looks like it's about 2 mil now. So I'm going to try and tackle this tight curve first, and I'm going to use some aluminium on the back to try and support the wood to stop it splitting out so uh, well that's my cunning plan let's get my gloves on <laughs> So the, the issue is now that I need I need to get the the curve much tighter than this thing um, here. So let's see if I can bend it a bit more and then actually just use the heat. Well, there's a bend for you. <sighs> uh, 
And as I think actually, if I just shape the top of that a little bit, that's going to go in there. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. So, in fact, I'm going to put that back into there. And just shape that a little bit. Now then, the problem is um, that when I shaped this end piece, I used the spindle sander. And if you can see, there's just a little indent in there. So if I hold that ruler against it, you can see it sort of dips down a bit. So I've just got to take that little bit off there. So let's see, let's do this with a sanding block and some grip paper. Let's see if I can do that. Of course I realised there was there was another approach to this and that was to slightly lessen that curve so that it would fit the uh, the binding. So I um, mounted a bit of uh, sandpaper on this block, this piece of dowel and um, well I've just rubbed the shape and sort of lessened the curve slightly and now I'm just tidying it up a little bit with this um, file. See what we've got. Now then, this is looking much more promising now. I think I think I'm going to get away with that. So let's just mark where we need to bend it from there and take it round to about there and we need to bend it the other way. Well the piece of aluminium certainly did the trick. There is a little bit of a split on it but not enough to worry about. Right, I'm going to have to cut that wood there, just on that edge. really close with that so it's gonna to have to be shaped once it's glued I think I'm going to attempt a glue up now um, I've got some masking tape um, I'll, I'll try and bind it with that but I might have to use some clamps I think as well let's see what we can do Blew off my hands. Right. I think I'm going to have to put this in the vise. Of course, it would have helped to have done that first. Right. that bit there that needs a bit more pressure so let's see if I can clamp that in Oops. well that looks like it's going to work I 
clamping calls on the fly here. Right, what we need is some uh, flooring. Oh, and that will do the job beautifully if I get it in the right place. Okay. Now I need to pull it into that corner. Well, now then, with that binding glued up, I think I'm gonna call it a day for this video. My daring neck rescue continues. I think I'm getting there, but you'll need to stay tuned to see how it goes. <laughs> I've no idea, I've no idea. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And thanks to Morris for sending me photos and details of his fantastic acoustic guitar. I know I've learned a lot from that. And don't forget, if you'd like me to feature a guitar that you've built, that you're proud of, please contact me through my website, footstepsguitars.co.uk. There's a contact form on there and I'll get back to you and we can get some details and uh, well, we'll feature your guitar on the channel. Excellent. And I've not mentioned it for a long while, but at the beginning of the year, I started this thing called Our Scoring Challenge. And the idea was to score a piece of music for a short video that I put out there. And uh, you can find the a link to the uh, video down in the description below. I have had a couple of people do some fantastic compositions against that video and it's really aimed at guitar players and uh, well, single instrument players to have a go at. Not a big orchestra necessarily, just uh, keep it small, keep it simple and uh, have a go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your comments. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon. Cheers.